the Luria-Delbert experiment excited many biologists, um, but there was skepticism because of the unfamiliarity with the methodology. And uh, Joshua Letterberg was a, a budding young bacteriologist who developed a new method that could allow him to validate the conclusions of Luria Delbruck with a method that was much more familiar to the rest of the biologists and therefore could be accepted by them as uh, you know, uh, an approach they could understand. And, and what, he, what he basically uh, figured out was that you could actually make prints of bacteria. And the, the simple concept is you spread bacteria onto a petri dish and then they will grow up generating progeny on those plates could transfer some of those progeny to a velvet and then place another bacterium on top of the velvet and transfer the bacterium from the velvet onto the new petri plate. So it's very much like a printing press where you have a master block and you put ink on it and then you take that block and some of the ink gets transferred to the first page and some of the ink gets transferred to the second page and the third page. And that technique is called replica plating. So you could take bacterium that were spread on the plate lots of them, and you could now transfer some of their progeny to plate which had, for example, T1 spread on them. In the spontaneous mutation model, prediction would be that if there was a bacterium on the master that was T1 resistant, some of its progeny would be transferred to the plate in exactly the same place on each of the plates. So again, by the printing press analogy, if you have over here on the printing press, you have an E, it's got some ink on it, and you put four different pieces of paper onto the master, the E will appear at the exact same place on each of the replicas because the E was pre-existing in the master. And so that is the, it's a very simple concept. If the spontaneous mutation had occurred prior to every exposure to T1, there should be progeny all together on a particular part of the plate, and I will transfer them to three different plates. The new colony should appear, the new resistant cell should appear at exactly the same place on all the plates. The Letterberg predicted a very different outcome if the mutations were being induced. In that experiment, transferring cells from the master to the plate with T1, some random cell somewhere on the plate will change to T1 resistance on that plate and give rise to a colony. Those same cells, when transferred to another plate, a resistance cell will appear randomly someplace else on the plate. So resistance colonies should not be at the same place on the different plates because it was not predetermined by whether there was a resistance cell in the existing master.